Hey guys, D Forte here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own DOS virtual machine inside a modern day computer. It will actually perform and behave a lot better than DOSBox does because it is an actual emulated PC. So I'm using VMware Workstation 12 Player, but pretty much any version will work. This is a free product that you can download for personal use. So what we're going to do is on the right click create new virtual machine and I'm just going to leave I will install the operating system later checked hit next and it asks the operating system type we're going to have it on other and we'll leave it on MS-DOS hit next and we will call this MS-DOS test. Here's the location by default where it's going to create all the files associated so you can choose where you want that to go. I'm going with the default. Next it asks how large the hard drive should be and this is the maximum space that it would be allowed to have. I'm going to drop this back just to one gigabyte because in DOS days, I mean, one gigabyte was way beyond what anybody really had anyway. The next thing I'm going to do is select store it as a single file. I like to personally work with the larger files so that I can just copy a single giant hard drive off if I need to. So we select that. We're going to just go with the default settings for RAM. It'll be 16 megabytes. Uh, you can change that here or you can change it later. So we'll go ahead and hit finish. So what we're going to do now is go into edit virtual machine settings and here's where it shows all the virtual hardware to emulate. We're going to be changing the CD-ROM to use an ISO image. If you have it on regular CD IDE auto detect it will try to automatically use the real CD-ROM drive in your computer, which is really cool. But I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be emulating a CD drive by picking an ISO file. So underneath disks, I'm just going to pick one here. Let's do... DOS boot disk. So this happens to be Microsoft DOS 6.22 but any version like I said can work. We just say OK and then we're going to play the virtual machine. And you'll notice right off the bat it booted this boot disk and we're now inside DOS. If we get a directory listing you can see here are the files on this boot disk. Let's do it this way. You can see more that way. So now if we try to go to the C drive, it doesn't exist yet because just like on a normal PC, until you F disk and format the drive, you can't install DOS on it. So what we're going to do is run F disk and this will allow us to con configure the partitions on this virtual hard drive. Alright, so we're going to just do a 1 here to create DOS partition. We'll do a 1 again to create the primary DOS partition. And then it asks, do you want to use the maximum size? Now this would be when you want to have maybe two or three partitions just to kind of play around with them. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, just use the whole disk. Okay, it's done. The system's now going to restart. Now, when it does restart, it, you'll notice something here. It's not going to work. It says missing operating system. So the next step that we have to do is change the boot order of the virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is restart the guest. You can't see. I did just click on the menu to say restart guest. It's this little menu here but for some reason on the screen it's not showing. But we're restarting 
and we're going to try to press the escape key which didn't work it goes so fast we're going to press F2 it looks like F2 is to get into settings well, it looked like it was F2 I can't see it quick enough here's what we'll do I'm going to go change some settings here to have it wait longer before it boots I'll show you here in a second alright I'm gonna flip this over to the left monitor okay so where I'm at right now is on looking at my C drive under my user directory virtual machines and DR DOS 6.0 you'll see I have a bunch of other virtual machines in here but what we're gonna do is change the boot delay so inside this file called VMX we're gonna open it with notepad and you look for bios.bootdelay right now it's set for 5 we're gonna set that for 15 and that's 15,000 means 15,000 milliseconds and I'm gonna save that I'm in the wrong file here we're not in DRDOS that's one of my other virtual machines we are in MS-DOS test okay so here we go so inside here you find the VMX file we're gonna open it in notepad now this boot delay is not gonna be in here see I did a search for it can't be found so it's a tag you're gonna have to add so I just pasted in the one that I had in my other virtual machine save it alright now I'm gonna go ahead and close that now let me flip back here to VMware now we're going to restart MS DOS test, hit play. Okay. You'll see now in the bottom right there's a timer going, counting down. It gives us 15 seconds. I'm going to hit F2 to go into BIOS I'm going to change the boot order because right now you see the hard drive is appearing before the CD-ROM drive that's why it's saying missing an operating system it's trying to hit that hard drive which doesn't have the OS installed yet so we need to change to make the CD-ROM appear higher which I just hit the plus sign to move it up so now we can exit saving changes and we will boot to our boot disk I'll just let the timer run down here so that you can see what happens and you will see that we boot to our DRDOS boot disk well I keep saying DRDOS DRDOS is my thing you guys know that MS-DOS we're doing MS-DOS right now so now that we've f disk that we need to format it and just say yes all data will be lost boom we'll just call it MS-DOS C the drive is now formatted there's nothing on it but we have not installed the operating system yet so the easiest way to get it to actually boot is to use the sys command so we say sys c colon 
it just transferred all the files which really is only the command com and there's some hidden files here you can see io.sys msdos.sys drv space bin and of course command.com the three of them are system hidden and read only whereas command.com is just read only so now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory called msdos and I'm just going to copy everything from the A drive to that directory just so that I have all the files I need inside there now the other thing I could do is take a look at the config.sys file that's on the floppy disk and if you look I use the type command to do that. If you look, it's loading device hymem.sys and then it's setting files and buffers. So we probably want to do the same thing on the C drive. So what we're going to do is copy that to the C drive and then we're going to edit it. Now when I type edit, it's not going to find it because I haven't updated my path statement yet to include the msdos directory. So I'm going to do that, path equals c colon backslash msdos, because remember, that folder right there is where I copied it. Now edit will be in the path, and we'll be able to modify this, so we can change this to point to where we installed. All of these have an REM statement in front of it which means they're remarks or they're comments so they're not actually working we don't need to do anything with those in fact I think I'm just gonna get rid of them uh, it wasn't a friendly cut and paste might have to come up here cut there we go okay so now we're gonna save this an exit. Now the auto exec bat file which also runs when you boot DOS is on the floppy. Let's see what's in it. Okay so MSCDEX is the file that loads CD-ROM drives and allows them to function. So we definitely want that. So let's copy auto exec.bat to the C drive and once again we're going to edit it and we're going to change it to make sure it's in the MS DOS folder. Before we do that, we're also going to set our path equal to MS DOS. That way I don't have to do that every time I boot, it'll just automatically happen. All right, so we should be good. What I'm going to do now is reboot. So I'm going up to the menu and doing restart. You can't see that, but that is what I did. and once again I'm going to go into setup and this time I'm gonna get rid of the CD-ROM again and move it lower in the priority list so that it hits the hard drive first now VMware does have the ability if you hit escape to choose the boot disk immediately so I'm gonna do that to save some time and just pick hard drive and so that loaded off the hard drive and as you can see, we're sitting in the C drive. And there is no A drive anymore. There is no D drive anymore. But we have successfully loaded DOS. Our drive is now our CD-ROM drive. How did I figure that out? Well, when I looked at the auto exec.bat, where it loads MSCDEX, you'll see a slash L colon R. So that said, use the R drive, the R letter for the CD ROM drive. Typically, you'd do a D, you'd make that D colon, but you can make it anything you want. So your wheel's probably spinning 
thinking, wow, I could load any kind of ISO file, any kind of CD-ROM drive in DOS now and just install it super easily by pointing VMware to a different ISO file, and that's correct. So it's really an amazing tool. I highly recommend playing around with it and getting used to it, having a lot of fun. You can see right now our conventional memory is only 511K because I do not have any kind of good memory management going on right now. This is where you could play around installing QEMM or some other nice fun memory utility you want to use. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you like this type of thing, let me know by commenting and hitting like on the video and I'll do more of these types of things. Uh, there's all kinds of things I could do with DOS, Windows 95, Windows 3.1, old stuff. I just don't know what the interest level is. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.